Hello and welcome to my guide for Butcher, who is the second boss of High Mall. This is a single boss encounter with one phase, however it does do a small enrage at the end. This fight mainly focuses around managing a single debuff and will involve moving stacks of players to manage this. Don't worry though, I will cover all of this stuff in a bit. Now first of all, I'm just going to go over the abilities. I'll go over the strategy for the main mechanic after that. So then, first, tank stuff. He's got a passive ability called Heavy Handed. This means that his auto attacks will trigger a second attack on another target within 5 yards, and if that um, second attack doesn't find another target, it will hit the first target again. All that this means is that the tanks will have to stand together on the boss. Next, we've got the Tenderizer. This does a large amount of damage, and it will increase the amount of damage that you take from subsequent Tenderizers by 50% via your regular style tank debuff. Ideally, you want to swap at 3-4 to four stacks. His other weapon thingy is the cleaver. This does damage and applies a stacking bleed. The good news, however, is that if you avoid the attack, the bleed component is not applied, so just minimize the bleeds and swap at about three to four stacks. Now that that tank stuff is covered though, it's time to talk about the main mechanic, which is cleave and gushing wounds. So cleave will cause him to target the largest clump of melee players and then deal a lot of damage split between them. It also applies a stack of a very, very painful bleed called Gushing Wounds. Now, if you hit five stacks of Gushing Wounds, you will die instantly. I'll cover the exact positioning and strategy for this in a bit, though. Now, he also does a thing called Bounting Cleave. This will knock everyone back, and then after a few seconds, he will charge at the largest clump of players. So basically, all ranged players who don't have a stack of Gushing Wounds should just stack together for this. Then finally, at 30%, he does Frenzy. This will increase his attack speed by 30% and damage by 10%. However, it also means that he will do his abilities faster, so your timings for, you know, dealing with cleave and stuff like that just need to be even more tight. Now, that's really it in terms of the abilities. However, there is a lot of coordination involved with ensuring that Gushing Wounds does not murder all of you. So then, strategy-wise, what you want to do is have three groups of players on the boss. Two equally sized stacks of melee players, and then the two tanks. You then want to assign a single ranged player to each one of these melee stacks. Remember that Cleave hits the single largest melee stack, so if one of the ranged players moves into their assigned melee stack, it will make it the largest stack, and thus it will cause Cleave to hit that stack of players. Then when your Cleave debuff, which is called Gushing Wounds, raises up to three stacks, that ranged player will run out of the group, and then the other ranged player will run into their group. This means that the original group is no longer the largest one, and the other group is now the largest one, meaning that the boss will start cleaving that group. So all you need to do is rinse and repeat. Essentially, all this mechanic means is that you'll have two ranged players with a lot of responsibility that need to be talking to each other and coordinating. I recommend putting a raid marker on each one of these ranged players just so that everybody knows what's going on. As far as coordination goes, um, when I did this attempt, I was one of those ranged players, and all you need to do is just on vent or team speak, call out your current amount of stacks. When it hits three, say that you're leaving your group, and then the other player will move into their group, and then they'll relay all that information to you, and then you decide when to swap. It's really quite easy, but you just have to not mess up, because if you do, everyone's dead, and that's not a good thing. Now, on top of this, we've also got Bounding Cleave. Now, for this, I recommend putting down a raid marker on the floor. Then, when the boss uses Bounding Cleave, all ranged players who don't have stacks will run to that marker and soak the cleave. After this, Butcher will move back to, um, you know, back to where the tanks are. Then the fight will resume. The melee groups will have to reform perfectly, and they will all need to be stood together in such a way that it's two completely distinct groups. So it can't all just be one big mess of players, as if it's an LFR mode or something like that. Now that's really it for this fight. This boss is just the DPS check, and it's pretty easy if done right. Finally, I'm just going to go over a few points to keep in mind based on your role. So if you're a DPS and you're in the melee stack, then ensure that you stay stacked tightly and don't move close to the other stack. Also, after Bounding Cleave, you must reform your stacks perfectly and quickly. Then the two ranged players who manage stack sizes really do need to coordinate well. You should both be on voice chat, and you should both have a raid marker on you so that everyone can see what's going on. Also, personal damage mitigation might be useful if you get three stacks of gushing wounds, and if you do get four stacks of gushing wounds, then please use personal damage um, mitigation, because your healers will probably need the help. Then finally, you want to use heroism at 30%, 
um, which is when the boss will use Frenzy. That's the hardest part of the fight and everyone will need help. Next, if you are a tank, you just need to swap at four stacks of Cleaver or Tenderizer. Then use your Avoidance to minimize the Cleaver stacks and use Mitigation once the stacks of Tenderizer get pretty high. Your third or fourth stack will involve you taking quite a lot of damage. Also, you want to position the boss quickly at the center of the room after bounding Cleave. If you're slow or just bad at repositioning the boss after Cleave, then it's going to make it even harder for your DPS players to appropriately or, you know, quickly get back in their stacks, and it can just lead to the fight overall being very messy. Then next, for the healers, well, you just need to watch out because there's damage flying everywhere during this fight. The tanks are going to take very heavy damage throughout the fight, and you should really be aware of their stacks, especially once Tenderizer gets really high. And then also, people with four stacks of Gushing Wounds are going to take an extremely high amount of damage, so you really do need to be aware of a, you know, if, if a group actually gets four stacks. If that happens, though, it will be because one of the ranged players messed up in terms of managing the stack sizes. Then also, you just want to quickly stack up in your group's marked position after Bounding Cleave. If you're a healer, then chances are you will not be involved in dealing with Gushing Wounds stacks, so when Bounding Cleave comes up, it will be your job to stack up and soak that. Overall though, it's not a particularly hard fight, and I'd say that after a few attempts, you should be able to cope just fine. This fight's mainly just a DPS check and a coordination check. Anyway, good luck for killing him, please subscribe to the channel if you want more daily Warlords of Draenor content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.